You can't just stay around this league for being a good guy or good presence. You know, you got to come out, you got to make plays. And, you know, he's got some lofty goals as a rookie, and that's that's such a good thing. You know, he wants to come in and help this team win football games. And again, each day on the field, he, he's quite the opposite. You know, he's very focused and he, you know, he's doing what he needs to do to try to become a better player. The Buffalo Bills have been one of the more talked about teams in the league this offseason. And to be fair, I do think it was warranted because of how much turnover actually happened on this roster. And for better or for worse, I do think this mini reset by the Bills organization was the right play. I know the popular phrase some people use is the quote unquote Super Bowl window, and I'm not one of those people that believes that is closed for the Buffalo Bills. But what I will say is for this upcoming season and the next several is an entirely different iteration of the franchise. The core group of players that helped the team win the last four AFC's championships and rattle off playoff win after playoff win are all pretty much gone heading into 2024. Both of the starting safeties in Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer, cornerback Tredavious White, center Mitch Morris on the offensive line, along with Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs, the team's two top receivers the last several seasons. But the fact of the matter is this group of players was only able to get the Bills to the AFC Championship game all the way back in 2020. And fast forward three seasons, they're either dealing with a lot of injuries, the performance is not the same because of their old age, or it was just simply time to move on. And while the loss of all of these veterans could impact the Bills the start of the season in 2024, I do think come the end of the year and in 2025 and 2026, these tough decisions will be proved to be the right ones by Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott as they try to eclipse the mountaintop while Josh Allen is still in his prime years. And probably the most important addition the Bills made this offseason was spending their first pick in the NFL draft on wide receiver Keon Coleman out of Florida State. Theoretically, Coleman is the Stefan Diggs replacement. Although the Bills went out this offseason and got a lot of veteran wide receivers to help fill the void, players like Curtis Samuel, Marquez Valdez Scanling, Mac Hollins, Chase Claypool, and while I think some of those guys can be fairly good additions and have some nice roles on the Bills offense, the team still needed a true X wide receiver and somebody that can make big play after big play and that is where the new rookie wide receiver steps into place and we've gotten our first look of Coleman during the Bills mini camp sessions and although almost all of these clips are just Coleman practically running on air I do think you get a good sense of what he did at the collegiate level and why the Bills were so interested in him first off just his size at over six foot four and 216 pounds you do not see many wide receivers in the National Football League having those physical characteristics he only ran a 461 at the 40 yard dash but at his size I do think that's more than fast enough especially when you combine that he has a 30 inch vertical leap. Now I don't see Coleman as somebody who's just gonna be running past people time and time again, getting behind defenses and making a ton of separation. That is not the reason the Buffalo Bills drafted him or what they're even gonna expect from him. It's due to his ability to make tough contested catches. And I think from his very first snap, he's gonna be one of the best contested catchers in the entire National Football League. If you go watch his tape from Florida State just a season ago, it seemed like every single game he was high pointing the ball and mossing one or two players in the end zone. And for Josh Allen, who's one of the best playmaking quarterbacks in the league and loves to make something happen out of nothing and then throw the ball down the field, this could be an amazing duo and somebody that we just see Allen lob the ball up to and Coleman just come down with it 80% of the time. And from some of the clips that we've seen on social media, Allen and Coleman are already working on their back shoulder slash fade routes in the end zone. And if they can develop really good chemistry on that play, like what Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams used to do, that is going to be a super lethal play once the Bills enter the red zone and very hard for defenses to stop. In college, since 2022, Coleman had 12 receiving touchdowns on contested catches, which was the second most in the FBS. And it's going to be very fascinating to watch because Josh Allen really hasn't had a wide receiver with Coleman's skill set. Davis was more of a deep threat, but he had questionable hands and he's not somebody that's going to go up and moss a cornerback. And Diggs in his heyday did have some flashes of what Coleman can provide, but I don't think he had quite the physicality that Coleman is going to bring, as well as the consistent contested catches. Oh, and I expect Coleman to cause a few less issues than Diggs as well. But outside of Coleman, I still think the Bills have a very nice arsenal of weapons. Khalil Shakir in the slot was actually the Bills' best wide receiver down the stretch last season, and his ability after the catch is what really makes him special. And with 600 yards and two touchdowns last season, I expect that number to continue to rise in 2024. I think Curtis Samuel will fit in that Diggs-esque role, meaning he's the guy that's going to be running these short to intermediate routes in the middle of the field. I think Samuel is a solid wide receiver, nothing too special, but for the contract, the Bills gave him a three-year, $24 million deal, and what he's going to be asked to provide for this offense, I do think it was a good pickup. You go to the running back position, and James James Cook really broke out last year and he was actually the focal point of the Bills offense the later half of the year. Once new offensive coordinator Joe Brady took over, really the philosophy of the offense completely changed. It's pretty well known the number of targets that Diggs had the first half of the year under Ken Dorsey and then his usage once Brady took over. The Bills started targeting him less and passing the ball less and relying on the legs of Josh Allen and James Cook. And he really produced over 1,100 yards and two touchdowns on the ground with 445 yards and four touchdowns in the receiving end. And coming out of 
Georgia, he was seen as a receiving back. And while he did have quite a few drops last season on dimes from Josh Allen, I still do think James Cook is one of the more versatile running backs in the league already. And the tight end duo of Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox will be back once again next season. And Kincaid had a very solid rookie season, 73 catches, 673 yards, and two touchdowns. I expect last year's first round pick to continue to improve and really emerge as the safety blanket for Josh Allen. And then Dawson Knox, he's more of the blocking tight end for this offense now, but he's still a reliable receiving target if the ball does go his way. And the offensive line, which the starting unit started all 17 games for the Bills last year, which is pretty incredible, is going to be the same again outside of the center position. The Bills signed Dallas Cowboys guard Connor McGovern to a three-year $23 million contract, and he is currently slated in to start week number one. But rookie fifth round pick Cedric Van Pran Granger from Georgia is another guy that could get a look at the position if McGovern gets hurt or somebody else on the offensive line and McGovern has to play guard. So when you combine all of these playmakers, I do think the Bills have a pretty underrated group. And I know this offseason, a lot of what people are saying is the Bills lost digs, Josh Allen and the offense are cooked. But no, I do not think that's going to be the case. And I would not be surprised to see the Bills average more points than they did last year, which was six in the league with 26.6. And quickly over to the Bills defense, they did lose a handful of veterans I talked about in the intro of this video. But the defensive line is going to be the same with AJ Epinesa, Ed Oliver, Daquan Jones, Gregor Rousseau, and even Vaughn Miller. The linebacking core is bringing back Terrell Bernard, who was fantastic last season, and Matt Milano, who almost missed the entirety of the year due to an injury. The cornerback room will roughly stay the same as well. Headlined by Rasul Douglas, the trade deadline acquisition last season. Christian Benford as the number two, and then one of the best slot cornerbacks in the entire league in Teron Johnson, who got a massive contract extension this offseason. With the safety duo, there are going to be two new starters this year, currently Taylor Rapp and Mike Edwards, who they signed away from the Kansas City Chiefs. But Cole Bishop, the second round pick for the Bills out of Utah, is another guy that could potentially get on the field. And any potential issues on defense, I do expect head coach Sean McDermott to solve. He's proven over the course of several years now to be one of the best defensive minds in the league. He did name Bobby Babich as the new defensive coordinator. He's been on the staff since 2017 and most recently was the linebackers coach. I am curious though if McDermott will pass the play calling duties to him. McDermott last year did call the defensive plays for the first time in several years. So that is something to keep an eye on as we approach the start of the season. So all things considered, I still believe the Buffalo Bills are going to be a powerhouse next year. There's still star players all across this roster. I think Brandon Bean did a good job filling up the holes of some of the veterans that did leave. And anytime you have a superstar quarterback, and the Bills obviously do in Josh Allen, you're going to have a chance any given Sunday, regardless of who's really out there with him. And after winning the AFCs for four straight seasons and even coming all the way back from six and six last year and still winning it, I don't see how you can pick against Buffalo from winning it again next year, despite the roster turnover. But will all of these moves and the addition of Keon Coleman finally be enough to get the Bills over the hump? Only time will tell, but it's going to be fun to follow along and see what ultimately ends up happening. But I want to know what you think about the Buffalo Bills and what you expect from Keon Coleman in 2024. Do you think he's going to make the Bills offense even better? Or do you worry the loss of Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs is going to have a big impact on the offense? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. But subscribe to the channel if you are new. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next one.